Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you again in class lecture number two in class nine. As I told you people last in last lecture yesterday that today our lecture is about grammar. You can open page number 67. Hope you have the book textbook page number 67. We uh, sorry 67, 69. But before to start the 69 grammar, you remember that I gave you the homework. Yes, I told you that uh, exercise D about the grammar, about the idioms. So what about you people? Hope so you have done it. So I want to just check your homework. How I will check? Because it was about the idioms. So I told you that the bits and pieces is the first idiom and you have to use in your own sentence. So how many students use this idiom in your own sentence? Yes, very good. All of you, very good. So I told you the meaning of the bits and pieces is the small pieces. So uh, yes, small pieces. What would be the meaning of the small pieces, dear students? Who will tell me? Who will have this? Yes, small pieces means they are divided in bits and pieces. Or another example we can say we should not, being a nation, we should not divide it in bits and pieces. We must show one nation. Yes. Number two is man in the street. Man in the street. What would be the meaning of the man in the street? Yes. The meaning of the man in the street is a common man. A common man. So it's. I think it's very easy for you people to use this idiom in your own sentence. Man in the street means common man. So what would be the, who will tell me? Yes, what would be used in the sentence? The man in the street is not happy today. Lots of difficulties, lots of problems are surrounding us. So we can say, we can use this idiom in our own sentence that man today, man in the street is not happy due to current circumstances. Very good. Number three, dear students, we have raising spirit. You know very well the meaning of the raising spirit. Yes, uplift the confidence. Uplift the confidence. Very good. So how do you use in the sentence? Yes, raising spirit means Kai's speeches. Yes, but raising the spirit of the nation. Yes, yeah, the Kai's speeches raise the spirit of the nation. Very good. And the dear students, pass through. Another is second last idiom. Pass through. Pass through means go through. Come out from the issue. So how do you use? We can pass through these problems safely. Inshallah. And the last father pray. Father pray dear student means be harm badly. Be harm badly. So don't father pray to this bad habit. These, this is the homework of exercise D on page number 66. I told you people and you just take your homework if it is correct and we will again start the next lesson. Dear students, uh, as you know in today's lecture we have uh, grammar topics. So we have four topics today. One is adverb, second is infinitive, third is germ and fourth conditional type three. First topic we have adverb. So today we will know about the adverb. Dear students, yes, if you have a book, definitely you have. Page number 69, first one is written adverbs. What is adverb? Who knows the definition of the adverb? I think you all are well aware about the definition of adverb. As you know, the total we have eight parts of speech in grammar. How many parts we have? Eight parts of speech. Number one, noun, two, pronoun. 3 verb, 4 adverb, 5 adjective, 6 preposition, 7 conjunction, and number 8 interjection. So the fourth part like adverb we are going to discuss today. Dear students, what is the definition of adverb? The definition of adverb is an adverb is a word that modifies the meaning of verb. An adverb is a word that modifies the meaning of a verb, but it does not modify the meaning of the only verb, but it modifies the meaning of adjective and adverb as well. Again, I'm going to read a verb that modifies the meaning of a verb, an adjective or an, an other adverb is called an adverb. Now, dear student, the question is 
that how it modifies the meaning of a verb, how it modifies the meaning of adjective, and how it modifies the meaning of an adverb. We have a few examples over here. The first example is I will eat later. I will eat later. Now, these students, here you can see I will eat later. The later is actually the adverb. Later is adverb, it modifies the meaning of verb eat. Verb is a eat is a verb and later is adverb. So it modifies the meaning over here eat. I will eat later. When you will eat? I will eat later. So later is telling more about the verb. Second example we have dear students, the place strangely quiet. The place strangely quiet. Now here dear students, strangely is adverb and quiet is adjective. As I told you that an example in definition that the adverb that modifies the meaning of verb, here it is. It modifies the meaning of adjective, here we are. Here you see, dear students, the quiet is adjective. What is this? Adjective and strangely is a adverb. Now it is telling that going to, adverb is going to describe the meaning of this adjective quiet. Strangely quiet it is. So, strangely is adverb and quiet is adjective over here. Number three, dear students, we as we tell the adverb also modifies the adverb as well. So, we have example, dear students, that almost and always. Almost and always. He is almost always busy. So, both are adverbs. Both are adverbs, but they are modified. How? He is almost always busy. So here, dear students, you will see that almost is going to modify always. He is almost always busy. So it means that here the third sen sentence is dear students. It is going to modify the meaning of adverb. So from the definition which is written in our textbook, it is crystal clear that the adverb is a verb which modifies verb, modifies adjective, and adverb as well. Hopefully you understand. Second dear students, you will see over here an example. It is written in your book that we have kinds of adverb. You are well aware about the kinds. Adverb of manner, adverb of place, adverb of time, adverb of frequency. So dear students, here in this sentence, three kinds of adverb are used. First one we have a sentence like she was singing beautifully at a concert last Sunday. Now dear students, look over here in the sentence. The first beautifully is an adverb of manner. It is telling that how she was singing. She was singing beautifully. Now at a concert, this is an adverb of place. Adverb of place. Where it was, where she was singing at a concert. Good. And third is when means time. So here it is adverb of time. So it is quite easy for you dear student that she was singing beautifully at a concert last Sunday. So means three kinds of adverbs are used in a single sentence. Adverb of manner, adverb of place, adverb of time. So hopefully you understand about the adverb. Okay, how adverb is going to modify the verb adjective and adverb and how we are supposed to be uh, distribute the sentence in the different positions. Dear students, the second topic in page, on page number 69, you will see that it is infinitives. Infinitives. Now dear students, infinitives. An infinitive is formed from a verb but doesn't act as a verb. It is quite strange that a word is formed from a verb, but it doesn't act as a verb. Look over here. Look, kittens want to play. Kittens want to play. Here, to play is infinite. To play is infinite. Dear students, a verb followed by to is called infinitive as well. When any verb is going to follow, like, I am going to give you examples more. To eat, 
to talk, to know. These all are the infinitives because they are starting with the two and they will remain same whatever the tense you are using because these are not the verbs they are called infinitives the verb is main look over here kittens want to play but if you want to change this verb into other tense like kittens wanted to play kittens will want to play so you can change only this verb which is the main verb but to play will remain same because it is not a verb it is actually infinite okay so dear students it what the what is the function of infinitive infinitive acts as a noun as an adjective and as a adverb how have a look over there i love to swim now here to swim is noun it acts as a noun i love to swim second the person to call is us here to call is an adjective what is this here is as an adjective and number 3 i can't wait to see i can't wait to see here to see is dear students a verb it means that infinitive works as a noun it works as an adjective and it works as an adverb these are the examples of infinitive before you dear students second thing which i want to tell you that it doesn't mean that the only infinite will start with to to play to come to talk these are infinite but we have bare infinite what we have bare infinite means the infinite is without to without to has i told you to eat to talk to know these are the infinite but when you will talk the bare infinite they are without to for example have a look over there dear students the bare infinite number 1 they made me wait they made me wait this is a bare infinitive it is without if you will say they made me to wait it is wrong over here so they made me wait it is a infinitive second example he bade me come come is also infinitive it comes after the object it comes after the object me is object here me is also object and then after the object the verb is coming that is called an infinitive and number 3 sentence we watch them play play is also bare infinitive why it is bare infinitive because two is not included with them when there is a two means it is not a bare infinitive it is infinite with two and bare infinitive without two okay so we today we learn about infinitive infinitive works as a noun as adjective as adverb and also dear students it is infinite few infinite infinitives are also without to they are called a bare infinitive examples are here given to you now what you have to do you have to make two to three or four more sentences about the infinitives and about the bare infinitives dear students the third topic is we have gerunds definitely you know very well about the gerunds but the kind of repetition i might be forget it so we are going to try it again gerunds what is gerunds gerunds are words that are formed from verbs but act as nouns gerunds are words yes that are formed from verbs but act as nouns it means that the gerunds work as a noun works as a noun and it is i think uh, it should be a uh, i think information to you dear students that the always noun and pronoun works as a subject or object of a sentence always yes noun and pronoun comes as a subject or object of any sentence always but gerunds also act as nouns and then when the gerunds are working as a noun it means they are working as a subject or object of the sentence as well how have a look but first i will tell you how to form a gerund or what is the formation of the gerund have a look verb plus ing comes as a gerund verb plus ing yes for example laugh l a u g h is laugh is a verb it is a verb but when we will add ing to it it becomes laughing very good like ing here and then what is this laughing 
L A U G H I N G is a laughing. Good. Laughing it becomes jerk. Now you can use this word as a subject of the sentence or as a object of the sentence. Yes. Have a look over there. Laughing is good. Laughing is good. Here the laughing is jerk. Okay. Another example. Running is my favorite activity. Running is my favorite activity. Here the running is also jerk. Now in both sentences, dear students, you will see that the laughing is also the subject of the sentence and running is also the subject of the sentence. Actually, it is a verb and when we are going to add ing form with it, it becomes jerk and it functions as a subject or object of a sentence. One more thing, dear students, if you have a book, definitely, then you will see the example Painting is good fun. Painting is good fun. I want to just tell you that how the painting, I'm going to write here. Painting is good fun. Now, dear students, look over here. The painting is subject over here. What is this? Subject. Yes. Painting is good fun. But I want to say another sentence like, I like Painting. I like painting. Here, dear student, the painting is object. It means Jerry works as a subject. Jerry works as an object. Very good. Okay, and third sentence is that, for example, my favorite, my favorite hobby is painting. Hobby is painting. Now, what is painting over here? Okay, compliment. Because noun verbs as a subject, noun verbs as an object, and noun verbs as an object complement as well. So the same gerund is subject over here, gerund is object over here, and the gerund is also object complement. So these students, gerund working as a subject or as a sentence, you, you can make more sentences. Definitely, because as you know, the practice makes men perfect. So if you are at home, you have a plenty of time, you are supposed to do practice at home. You can make the germs as a subject. You can make the germs as, a, as an object. So like for example, painting is good fun. I love painting. I like painting. Swimming is my swimming is the best exercise. I love, love swimming. So such like sentence you can make at home because you uh, you can you have plenty of time and you will do it at home. Dear students, uh, in the last topic of on page number 69, as I told you, there will be four topics today in grammar. And the last topic is conditional type 3. Conditional type 3. Dear students, why we are going to call it type 3? Because we have two more types. Conditional type 1, conditional type 3. We have more like conditional type 1 and conditional type 2 as well. Now, I will start from the conditional type 1. What is the conditional type 1? Dear students, condition means you are supposed to use the word if. Yes, for example, I have example. If I work hard, I will pass. Now, this is a very normal situation. The time is with you. And now, for example, you are in class 9. And definitely everyone is saying that if you work hard, you will pass. And this is the first condition. But the condition is what? Did work hard. Work hard is a condition. If you work hard, you will pass. Okay. Then we have condition in type 2. In condition type 2, what we have, it is about the past. Yani past is used in both sentences. Because in condition 2, we use two sentences. So if I worked hard, I would pass. If I work hard, I would pass. Means you didn't work hard and you didn't pass. So time is up. In other words, time is up. That is type 2. Type 2. In this, now we are going to move to conditional type 3. It is also unfulfilled condition. Unfulfilled condition. What we say, you can see on your page, on book page number 16 and last uh, lines that condition of this type say that something did not happen 
because a certain condition was not fulfilled. For example, if I had worked harder, I would have passed the exam. Now it is kind of, you know, uh, someone is going to be thinking that, oh my God, if I had worked hard, I would have passed the exam. So the time is up, a lot of time has been uh, passed. So if I had worked hard, but you know what, what happens? What the condition was not fulfilled means that, like this that I didn't work hard and I didn't pass the examination. So dear students, this is condition type 3. As I told you, condition type 1, I, if I work hard, I will pass. Condition type 2, if I work hard, I will pass. But in 3, if I have, it's a past perfect. If I have worked hard, it's a past perfect tense. I would have passed the exam. More examples I can tell you. For example, if you say, if I had known you were coming, I would have begged the cake. If I had known you were coming, I would have begged the cake. But I didn't know and I didn't beg the cake. Okay. Number three, I would have been happy. I would have been happy if you had called me on my birthday. But you didn't call me and I'm not happy. So these, uh, these are the examples of the dear students on conditional type 3. After the conditional type 3 dear students, when we will uh, open the page number 60 uh, from 69 to 70, turn on the page number 70, we will find few exercises over there. It is very good for us to have a look over there on these exercises. Exercise A, find the kinds of adverbs in the lesson. What you have to do? Kinds, as I told you, what are the kinds of adverbs? Adverb of manner, yes, adverb of place, adverb of time, adverb of frequency, adverb of degree. So five adverbs kinds are written over there in this book. You are supposed to be find the kinds of the adverb from the lesson and you have to write these adverb kinds over here on the book. Then we have exercise B, C, five, write five sentences using adverbs of manner, place and time. Make sentence using the following verbs followed by infinitives. But the D exercise is that you are supposed to use the gems. Dear students, because we four, four topics of the grammar we learned today. So four topics are given over the exercises of the four topics are given over here. So good at swimming, accused of stealing, very good, said at losing and tired of working. So dear students, now in the conditional type 3, there are three sentences given to you. What you have to do? Uh, half sentences are given to you and half you have to do at your home, on your book. For example, if you had studied hard, dash. That dash will be completed by you. Number two, if you had come to me, the last portion is left out for you. And number three, if I had seen him, the remaining portion you have to complete it. So dear students, it was all about the unit number 6. I tried my level best to make you understand about the unit number 6. First I read the lesson, then I told you the meaning of the difficult words, then the theme as well, and the question answers will be sent to you by WhatsApp inshallah. And then we have a topic as a adverb, gerund, infinitive and conditional. I tried my level best to make you understand about the grammar topics as well. It was on page number 69. And now also the helping material of these grammar topics will be sent to you on the uh, WhatsApp. And hope so. You will work hard. See you inshallah tomorrow with new topic. Till that, bye bye. Allah Hafiz Allah sir.